Hello, and welcome to DREAM, where we are focused on connecting to and building community. We are committed to helping individuals break cycles. We are delighted that you have taken the opportunity to join us. So prepare yourselves for this week's teaching and equipping session. Get ready to be educated, equipped, and set free as you listen to this week's broadcast. And thank you for joining us. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am Deborah Edwards with the Dream Team, Dream Team Ohio, and I am so honored to be sitting next to this wonderful young lady here. This is no other than Coach Renee Brown. She is the founder of Mothers of Incarcerated Children. And listen, we're going to have a wonderful time tonight as we talk about mama trauma. You know, a lot of times when people hear that, they talk about mama drama. But no, we're going to talk about trauma tonight. Uh, when we look at children a lot of times that are having trouble at school or that are being bullied or something, we, we focus on the children. But we never really take the time to look at what does that feel like? What does that look like when a mother is in a position where she's carrying the load emotionally and physically and especially when she feels like she can't even help her own child? And so we're going to look at mama trauma from a lot of different aspects tonight. So if you saw the infomercial earlier, you, um, I gave a, a little uh, insight as to what we're talking about tonight and wanted to let you know that we will definitely probably go over tonight. And so I hope you have about an hour and 20 minutes to be with us. We are just excited to get started. And so before... Renee begins to talk, I want to just really go ahead and talk about what trauma is. And this is from Psychology Today. It says, trauma is the experience of severe psychological distress following any terrible or life-threatening event, okay? Sufferers may develop, and let me know if this is, if as I list these, if one of these describe what you are feeling or what you're going through, please just tap it in because we want to follow up with you, okay? It says sufferers may develop emotional disturbances such as extreme anxiety, anger, sadness, survivor's guilt or PTSD, ongoing problems with sleep, physical pain, encounter turbulence in their personal and professional relationships, and feel a diminished sense of self-worth due to the overwhelming amount of stress. Now, if you have, if you can identify with any of those, we want you to just go ahead and comment in. And if you want us to reach back out to you, if you just need somebody to talk to, you'd be su uh, surprised how powerful that is. Just having somebody to talk to. And I think Renee is going to uh, take a minute to talk about that in a few minutes, but I want to start off with the scripture. I want to talk about Moses. You know, everything we do um, has a biblical foundation to it. <clears throat> and so when we look at Moses, if you remember when he was a young man and, and found out his identity, he really, at least he thought he found out his identity. He was identifying himself uh, ethnically with the Jewish people. But don't you know that Renee and I can both be dark complexion, but our ideas, our focus, our dreams can be so different. And so that's why it's not a, a good thing to always just look at somebody and be like, oh yeah, that, that's my sister. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my brother, because you guys can be just as different as night and day. And it's important when you have experienced a traumatic event that you get around somebody that thinks like you or somebody that can pull you out, somebody that cares enough to tell you the truth and, and, and be hard sometimes with you and not allow you to just stay in that place, it, to get comfortable in a place of after you've experienced trauma, can be devastating and life-threatening. And so Moses identified himself with the, with the Israelites. And so you know the story. One day he saw one of the Egyptians uh, beating one of the uh, Israelites, and it says that he was moved with compassion. That This is Exodus 2, verses 11 through 12. He looked on with compassion at their hard labors. And when he saw the Egyptian... Uh, beating the man, he looked around to make sure nobody was watching. That's that's important, right? And then he went and he killed the Egyptian. And so it says the next day or a couple of days later, when he went out again, he saw two Israelites. 
fighting with each other. And he just couldn't believe it. Like, as, with everything that you're going through, with everything that I see, because remember the day before, he was moved with compassion. Like, they already got it hard. You know, I'm going to talk later about when one loss happens after the other, when one traumatic event comes after the other. How do you balance that? And so Moses was like, how in the world are you guys do dealing with this? How are you fighting each other? You need to be coming together. And so they said, so you're going to kill one of us like you did yesterday? And he didn't know that he had been seen. See, a lot of times we think nobody sees us. They don't see us when we're hurting. They don't see us when we're crying. We try to suffer in silence. But somebody always know, even if they don't speak up, they always know what you're going through. And it tells us that Moses left. And then the next thing that I want to talk about, because Moses, in Numbers, the 20th chapter, it starts off with saying, this is the 40th year. This is not the fourth year they've been in the wilderness. Not the 14th year they've been in the wilderness. Not the 24th year. This is the 40th year. And if you have read all of Exodus, you know everything that Moses went through and how they, uh, the, the children of Israel were stiff-necked and they complained. Every time they complained, God came in and, and moved on their behalf. And yet a little while longer, they complained again. And they complained again. And so <clears throat> when you get down to the second verse, it says there was no water there. And so they gather together against him. See, there's nothing like feeling isolated. There's nothing like feeling depressed. There's nothing like feeling lonely. And then the people that are supposed to support you come up against you. They provide no emotional support. They provide no financial support. They come up against you when you're doing all that you can to hold it together. When you're doing all that you can to hold them together, to provide for them. And it says they gather together against Moses and Aaron. It says the people contend with them. And so they was like, why did you bring us here? Man, he's been hearing this for 40 years. We should pay attention to what I'm saying. He's been hearing this for 40 years. Some of you, the trauma that you experienced happened 40 years ago. Happened 20 years ago. Happened 10 years ago. Happened five hours ago. And so you're thinking, um, for those that have been suffering for a long time, you're like, man, is this ever going to end? Is the pain ever going to end? Am I ever going to get out of this cycle? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Whether it's been 40 years, 20 or 10, yes, you are going to get out of that cycle. And so it says that they begin to say, why did you bring us through to this wretched place? 40 years later, they're still remembering Egypt. They're still saying, hey, at least we have pomegranates back there. Think about it. Pomegranates? That's all you can think about? At least we had figs back there. They're still thinking about that 40 years later. How about that? Moses has had enough. And so he and Aaron, they go and they talk to God because these people like want to uh, kill them. And so God begins to talk to them. And he says, take the rod. And you and your brother Aaron assemble the congregation and speak to the rock. Now get this. God did not hold it against Moses when he killed the Egyptian. He didn't. You know, he moved out of compassion. He didn't hold that against him, which is going to be a great segue into Renee. He didn't hold that against him. But when God told him, I want you to speak to the rock so that the water will come from the rock so that they will know that I'm here. Moses was so angry. It says that he gathered them together. He said, listen here, you rebels. <laughs> you can hear the anger. He says, what you want us to do? Just bring water out of the rock? And instead of speaking to it, he hid it. And that cost Moses. God said, listen, because you and Aaron didn't trust me, I needed you that even when you were in your darkest place, even when you were traumatized, even when you were overwhelmed, I still needed you to represent me. We knew they were stiff-necked. We knew they were heathens. I needed you to represent me in that case and in that situation. And because you did not, because you did not represent me, you will not be able to cross over into the promised land. So we're going to talk about your response to the situation. And I love um, uh, Coach Brown's response to her situation. So we're going to start with her now. And I just want you, uh, Renee, to tell us, how did this ministry come about? Well, the ministry came about because um, my youngest son is incarcerated right now. And so this isn't his first time being incarcerated. Okay. And so I was up early one morning and I was just having a, a mama moment. 
and I was just feeling a little challenge and, you know, thinking about, you know, what we were getting ready to go through as a family because when your child is incarcerated, it's just not him. Mm -hmm. Everyone is incarcerated, not physically, but some type of way, whether it be emotionally, you know, financially, however. So I was just having what I call a powwow with God. And I said, Lord, I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You know, I say it now. I said, I'm just tired. I said, I, I need a support group for mothers of incarcerated children. And so the Lord said, you start one. Mm -hmm. I said, <laughs> me? So I heard the Lord say, you start one. So I went to work. And I began, and the Lord just began to download information into me. Just download what to do, do this, do that. Gave me the name. Everything was just flowing. And so COVID came, and it shut down our entire world. Initially, I was going to, you know, rent a, uh, reserve a room at the public library, and everyone come together, and mothers, and, you know, and we talk, and we pray, and, you know, we vent. Mm -hmm. And so uh, COVID shut down everything. So I was like, well, Lord, that's that. And so uh, I was talking with a friend of mine, a so, uh, daughter in Christ, and she and I were talking one evening, and we were talking about something totally different. She said, Miss Renee, her name is Erica West, and Erica said to me, Miss um, Renee, I keep hearing the Lord say, refocus, refocus. Mm. <laughs> and, so, and so I said, she said, Miss Renee, is it something that the Lord told you to do? And so... I thought about it, and I said, well, I was going to start this support group for mothers of incarcerated children, but then COVID came, and so she has a ministry called Go, and so she said, let's go, let's go. So she just started sending me information, and she was just say, do this, do this, do that, and so the ministry was launched last year, and so we're on Facebook, and so what I do is I go on three times a day, sometimes more than that. And I post encouraging scriptures. I sent out invite, invites to different, you know, friends. And, you know, the ministry has taken off. And I quote, um, I give a scripture in the afternoon. I say, good morning, sunshines. And, you know, encouraging word. I pray with them. And I tell you, I want to share this one story. And I, I believe that, you know, it's going to be a blessing to those out there listening. So I sent out Eva invites to the people. And so... A young lady, uh, she messaged me a messenger. And so she said, Miss Renee, uh, I got this uh, message from you where, you know, you added me to this group. And I said, well, Lord, I said, wait a minute, I done offended somebody. <laughs> and so I was like, because, you know, she probably thinking, why she sent, why did she send me this? Because I don't have a child incarcerated. Right. And I'm like, okay, God, help me respond in the right way. Give me the words to say back to her. So I said, um, sweetheart. I didn't add you to the group. I invited you to join the group. And just like with any other invite that you get, you it's up to you to either accept it or decline it. Mm -hmm. And so she responded back immediately. She said, I accept, exclamation marks. And then she went further to say, I have a son that's incarcerated. I had no idea. Wow. Wow. No idea. She and I used to work together years ago. We don't contact each other. We you know, like each other comments on Facebook. And she said, he's awaiting trial. And she said, I want you to pray for my son mm -hmm. and for his children and our family. Mm -hmm. And I said, look at God. Right. Because I had no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, so God has been adding the ones that he want to be a part of it. That's you know, it. and he, this is my son's third time being incarcerated. Wow. So, yes, I'm experiencing some trauma behind yes. it. And when you contacted me and said, hey, I'm doing sister to sister, and we're going to about, talk about mama trauma, I said, mm-hmm, I, I experienced some mama trauma. <laughs> and I'm quite sure that the other members of the group, the mothers, that they're experiencing mm -hmm. some mama trauma. Can you tell us a little bit about yours? My trauma is, is when he first got locked up, I didn't go to court. Mm -hmm. I couldn't. I didn't want to hear anything about it. I didn't want to know about what was going on. Yeah. I just didn't want, I don't want to know. I'm tired, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so I didn't go to court until the sentencing. Some of the trauma is, and I'm going to be real. Mm -hmm. When he calls me, I know the area code and I know the number. Mm -hmm. And because I know what, just I just kind of know how the conversation is going to go. And I'm, I look at the phone, I'm like, I'm like, I don't really want to talk. 
That's my child, and I love him, but I don't want to deal with the trauma of him, you know, arguing with me, the demands, you know, the mama, you don't understand. Well, of course I don't understand, because mm -hmm. I'm not where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, asking for money, mm -hmm. you know, I need money on my books, mm -hmm. I need money for this, I need money for that, you know, and so it's like, it, it comes to try to steal my peace, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and so that's some of my trauma, and then I have to deal with my other children, you know, mm -hmm. and what they're going through, you know, their brother being incarcerated again, yeah. yes. you know, this yeah. is the third time that we all have been through this, mm -hmm. and the most traumatic, I think, time for us was when the first time he was incarcerated, and you know about this, and his baby passed, his first child passed, and so we had to go to that prison and tell that child that his first child, she was three months old, that she was gone. That was traumatic for us, mm -hmm. you know? And so those are some of the experiences I have as a mother, you know? Mm -hmm. And laying, at night, laying up at night wondering, is my child okay? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I haven't heard from him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he hasn't called. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's dead or alive. And I, I got a letter from him this Saturday. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mama, all the stipulations they have, he said, if you write me, you can't write me on line paper. If you write me on line paper, they're going to throw the letter away. I'm not going to even get it. Uh, you can't write on the back of the paper. You can't send me any stamps because they're going to throw them away. You know, so that type of trauma, you know, where he's at, he's in the hole. You know, he's been there since he got to that facility. That's not his final destination. He's yeah. gonna be sent somewhere else. We don't know yet. Okay. We won't know till he gets there, yeah. you know? And this I think is the most traumatic. He can only call once a month. So I just have to be by the phone or hopefully, you know, and because I know the area code, mm -hmm. when I see it, I, I know this is my child, mm -hmm. you know, and I know the answer because he may not can call back in another 30 days. Oh my goodness. You know, so that's part of my trauma. Oh, thank you for sharing it. It is kind of heavy. Um, I know that some people, so when we talk about trauma, of course it's related to grief. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that, you know, look at the stages of grief. So as I, as I mentioned, these stages of grief, which one would you say was a constant companion to you? Denial, anger, bargaining, acceptance or depression anger okay anger is mine because i'm angry that he's there again mm -hmm. so gifted so talented mm -hmm. i mean have so much potential and this is where you're at again mm -hmm. and then th this is what i say you know when he called me with all his demands and i'll say i don't work for you i work but not for you that's and, tough love uh, yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people may not understand that. They may be like, oh, that's she sounds so hard uh -uh. or she sounds so insensitive. Uh -uh. But there is a time for tough love because you want the person to be able to reflect on how they got there. Because if they don't if they don't have the opportunity to reflect and take ownership for how they got there, they'll never change. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you just have to have that tough love and having tough love is not easy. And I know Renee can tell you, she, you know, she might be like forceful talking to him, but inside, mm -hmm. like if I could snatch him out of that place, I would. Can I tell you this little story? Tell me. It's a funny story. So three weeks ago when he got the call and he was putting his demands on me, and I'm thinking, okay, I already told this boy, I don't work for him. He hasn't gotten it yet. And so we were having words. Mm -hmm. And so he kept saying, listen, listen, listen. And I'm like, no, you listen. So I, I became very, very angry. Mm -hmm. And I hung up. Okay. I hung up the phone. Because yeah. I'm like, I've had it way up to here. Mm -hmm. So the funny part about it is, he did call me back the next day. I don't know how he did, but he did. And I looked at the phone and I thought, he told me he couldn't call back in 30 days. <laughs> so I, I didn't want to answer, but I did. But this is the funny part. He said, Mama, I'm sorry. Apologetic. Had humbled himself. You know, if you argue, they'll di disconnect the call. He had no clue. I hung up. <laughs> I, he had no clue. And I ain't let him think. No, no difference. <laughs> <laughs> However, God worked it out. It worked out. <laughs> 
Oh my God. I know that we're going to talk about um, coping, but can I know that you're very busy in ministry. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is very busy in ministry. Every week, she's going to feed somebody. Mm -hmm. And um, I just admire her so much because being, when we talk about mama trauma, you still have to keep going. That's you it. Sure do. You still have to keep going. Life does not stop with you. Unfortunately, my sister-in-law's mother died last oh. week. Oh. And uh, she said, Deborah, I just want to be quiet. I just want to oh. be away. And she said, but I can't. And I said, yeah, because people are calling you and they're saying, I'm so sorry your mom died. I said, but they don't realize you already had life going on. You know, it's like this, this, this. And my mom died. It's one loss after the other. It's one situation after the other. And so, and then on top of that, you know, when you've been trying everything you can to keep your mom alive, now she died. And so one of the things that we're going to talk about is the guilt you feel for, for feeling relieved. Because sometimes when you've dealt with tra traumatic situations and you finally get to a place where you'll be like, okay. I can accept this, you start feeling guilty for being able yeah. to accept it yeah. because you think people are expecting you to still be crying, to still be angry, to still be like weeping, but you are moving in life. That's and it. as a mother, you can't get stuck. And so I just admire the fact that you continue to work in ministry even though part of your heart is broken. To God be the glory. Mm -hmm. All right. To God be the glory. So what what can you give us, um, uh, the people that are listening, can you give them at least one thing that you do to cope? I pray a lot. I talk a lot to my Father, my Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And I just commune with Him all day long, all day long. You know, every, you know, if I have a moment here, because on top of doing ministry, I work two jobs. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And so, yes, so... And I, right now, it's like three ministries that I'm doing on top of the two jobs. So I'm constantly in prayer, okay. communing with God, fellowship, having Keeping intimate yourself time. yourself busy. Yes, yes. Intimate time with God, you know, loving on him and letting him love on me. Man, so how challenging, or is it challenging when people do call you for prayer who have children that are incarcerated? Uh, how do you find the strength to encourage them? When you may have just had a, a moment yourself. Well, it's not really about me. It's about what God called me to do. And so that's where the strength comes from him and not from me. Because the Lord told me a long time ago, Renee, it's not about you. Yeah. You keep wanting to make it about you. <laughs> so stop having your pity party. You know, so prayer is where I dwell. Mm -hmm. And so it's like. You know, it's what I do. You know the song says, praise do. is what I do. <laughs> yeah. Prayer is what I do. You know, wow. so it's, it's, it's my familiar place. Okay. So I don't have a problem with that. And also the ministry page, it's not just for me. It's not just for them, but it's for me as well. Mm -hmm. And I put, I put a, a comment out there the other day when I made a comment post. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, this is for me as well. You know, while I'm encouraging you all, yeah. I'm encouraging me, too, because this is for me, too, because we're going through this thing together. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. That is so encouraging. Mm -hmm. So, Renee, can you tell people how to get in touch with you? Well, the name of the ministry is MOIC, and it's M-O-I-C, Mothers of Incarcerated Children. And I have a Facebook page out there with the ministry. You can go to that page. You can also message me on Facebook. Feel free. Don't hesitate. I'm here for you. I would love to speak with you and, you know, so you can, I, can, I will be your sounding board and we can pray and we can talk and we can have a powwow and you can vent and I'll listen. So that's how you can reach me. It's MOIC, M-O-I-C, Mothers of Incarcerated Children. I am so honored and we're not done with you yet, but we're going to, um, you know, Kai's going to take Renee's spot right now. Unfortunately, I wish I could get all of the people that are going to speak tonight in the, in the view of the camera, but we're not uh, there yet. We're going to be there. And so thank you, Renee. Uh, Kai, if you, if you guys could just trade places, okay. if you could come on. Kai was a young mother and her uh, last son um, had some health challenges. Mm -hmm. And so when you got... Your young mother, your young wife, your marriage is not all that you thought it was going to be. Uh, you're rebelling against parents. You're rebelling against God. And now you got a sick child. 
all of the above. <laughs> you know? And so, um, you know, she shared something with me the other day. And a lot of times, I cannot hold everything that that I say to people. If I tell, if I told you two weeks ago that God said A, B, and C, I probably won't remember it today, you know, unless it was just something that startled me. Right. But a lot of times I don't hold hold that because you, you can't. You just can't. And she was saying that um, I gave her a word that she was getting ready to have, uh, that I saw another child, another she boy. Did. And she said she rejected it. <laughs> I rejected that word. I had, at that time, we had two younger children who were both under the age of three. And my mother had just passed. And so I was dealing with that. And Apostle called me and said, I have a word for you. God said, you're going to have a son and you're going to get a house and you're going to be blessed and all this stuff. And my mind only focused on, I'm going to have a son. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I couldn't even hear the part about the house and how beautiful it was. All of that went out the window. It was, I'm going to have another son. <laughs> so I told her, no, I'm not. That has to be either my cousin or my brothers. It has to be one of them. And uh, if I have another child, it's going to be a girl. So that's definitely not my, my testimony. <laughs> this ain't it. And so I told her I was not going to accept that. And that I rejected it. And God told me all these years later, that had to be 18 years ago. God woke me up the other morning and brought that back to me and said, you had to walk around the wilderness because you rejected my word coming through someone. I was talking to you and you basically said, nope, I don't want it. Mm. And so because of that, you had to go through everything you went through. Had You just humbled yourself in the beginning and just said, God, what do you have for me? I'll accept it. Whatever it is, it doesn't line up with my plan because sometimes we think of our plan and our plan doesn't always equal out to what God's plan is for yeah. our life. And so because it wasn't my plan, I was, mm -mm, nope, not me. <laughs> Let it be somebody else. And God said, okay, start back over. And it's going to be 17 years in the wilderness, 17 mm. years in a desert place. And then when I moved back to Cincinnati, we moved to the same apartments we were in when I left Cincinnati. And God said, I'm going to let you start all over from one wow. to do it wow. right <laughs> this time. And I had to start all over from one. Mm. Yep. <laughs> She was my most interesting candidate for deliverance training. <laughs> she cried when other people were going through. Yes. And so, but we're not going to go there because right. we, we've got to get through this. There's some great information coming. And so I'm going to ask you the same um, questions that I asked Renee. Mm -hmm. um, and this one I forgot, Renee. Well, no, I didn't. Just tell us about that season of your life first. So we found out uh, Christian had his first seizure at the age of two. Mm -hmm. I was sick upstairs. My husband was going to run to the store real quick to grab something for me, uh, some jello and some more cough medicine. And he came upstairs to check on me, said Christian is laying down on the sofa downstairs. He's okay. Just stay in bed. Don't come out of the room. So had he left, I would have never known Christian had a seizure because I would have been upstairs. He was going downstairs, and when he went down, he happened to look over at Christian and realize Christian was having a seizure. I just heard him scream my name, and we all know that scream that something's horribly wrong. I'm yes. quick. So mm -hmm. I went running down the stairs to figure out what it was, and Christian was having a full-blown seizure. Mm -hmm. It took 20 minutes for the ambulance to get to our house. He never stopped seizing in that 20 mm -hmm. minutes. Ooh. And that's 20 minutes from me calling 911, and they're sure. going, has he stopped yet? No, he's still having one. Mm. They said Christian went without oxygen for 20 minutes wow. um, trying to catch his breath during a seizure. That was the first one. Uh, after that, we start seeing more and more of them. Uh, when he got about four years old, we wanted to put him in daycare so I could go back to work and no daycare would take him mm. because they were saying, this is going to raise our insurance rates. We can't afford this. I'm sorry, your son can't come here. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I couldn't put him in daycare. We're already struggling financially. I have to work. There's no way that I can't mm. and we can't. I tried to get assistance through the government and through unemployment or anybody else. And I kept telling, getting told no, because your husband makes too much money. Mm. But we only have $20 when we go to the grocery store. How is that making too Ooh, much money? Can I, I get food stamps or something? <laughs> Absolutely not. And then on top of that, uh, at five years old, Christians start having different types of seizures. Oh and so he starts kindergarten. And I was telling the apostle about this the other day. He comes in the room and says, mom, something's wrong with my eyes. Ooh. I'm looking at his 
eyes and I don't see anything wrong. And so I'm like, Christian, you're fine. Just come lay down with me because I'm thinking he's panicking. He's overreacting. Mm -hmm. I'm stressed because I'm trying to keep dinner together, keep the other two busy and take care of the husband. So I'm trying to juggle everything. So I'm like, Christian, just sit down with me on the sofa. Let's just watch TV. Mm -hmm. And then he sits up and he's like, no, mom, something is wrong with mm -hmm. my eyes. Again, I look at his eyes. Nothing's wrong. Christian looks absolutely fine. And then all of a sudden, he goes, Mom, something's really wrong. And so I look at his eyes, and they're twitching back mm. and forth. And he can't focus his eyes on anything. Called the neurologist. He said, that's another type of seizure. Jesus. Then Christian, a week later, started having these seizures where he would just fall backwards. So mm. we have the grandma seizures, and we have these two new seizures. And the doctors are like, we don't know what's going on. As a young mom, I don't know how to help. I don't even know what these diagnoses are called. When I would go in the rooms with the neurologist, he was the best in Atlanta, but he would talk over my head. Mm -hmm. As a young mom, I don't know how mm -hmm. to interpret what you're saying. I don't even know where to go mm -hmm. to ask these questions. And then I have the school telling me, Christian's got to get kept behind because, you know, mm -hmm. he, he's just not grabbing his information. A lot. After the it uh -huh. was a lot. And then juggling two older children. And so I just... I, I got overwhelmed by it all and then losing my mom on top of that. So I feel like I am on this island by myself mm -hmm. that no one can relate to mm -hmm. with all of this stuff going on. And nobody can help me maneuver through this stuff because to me, I'm feeling like nobody understands. Yeah. Like there's no one else. Even when you're married, mm -hmm. even when you're married and you're going through a situation where uh, you have a child that's sick. Sometimes even your 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 spouse cannot support you mm -hmm. because they're trying to identify themselves and they're trying to uh, pinpoint how do I really feel. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who have known me personally, you know that my daughter has been uh, battling a chronic illness. And so she and I were talking a couple of weeks ago. She had called. She was been in the hospital for several yeah. weeks now. Yeah. And um, she texted me, and her dad was at the hospital with her. This was when she could have a visit. Her. And she texted me and she said, I just want to cry. Mm -hmm. And I said, honey, cry. She said, I can't because dad can't take it. Oh. <laughs> she said, dad can't take it. So I got to hold it in. Right. So she had mm -hmm. to hold it in because we're all at different emotional levels mm -hmm. and we have to honor that in each other. We can't get mad Absolutely. because mm -hmm. you can't be, you know, you're, you, you're not processing the way I want you to process. Mm -hmm. And so when you've got all that you had going on, Mm -hmm. And then uh, your husband may not have been able to support you because yeah. he's trying. He's a young man too, yeah. and he's like, "Well, I got to work. Yeah. She can't work. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't make it to all these doctors' appointments. I can't make it to school. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I get home, I, I, I need to. I need to go to sleep. I need to go yeah. to sleep. To so, how did you? Night. You know, you were saying that you just felt like you were on an island. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it in the beginning, my husband was kind of like. I feel like you can handle the children and the schools and mm. the doctors by yourself so that I can focus on work. And it was like a divide for him. Mm. Like, she's okay over there. So uh, years later, as we're talking about it, he was like, I never thought to check mm. in because I, I just assumed you got that. You were okay. Um, and, and so it was a lot to handle at that time. And then add to it, I have an older child who kind of felt like, I have to be the responsible one for everybody. Mm. So I got to make sure mom's okay. Mm. I got to make sure Christian, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out. He told him when he was about six, Christian, I'm going to become a neurologist because I'm going to figure out what's oh. wrong with you and I'm going to fix you. So he yeah. became like that protector of everyone, mm -hmm. which is hard to imagine for a six year old a feeling like I've got to protect the whole family and yeah. make sure everybody's okay. And then the middle child just felt like nobody is here for me because mm. yeah. everybody's so focused on the baby. Baby mm -hmm. who has this disease well what about me mm -hmm. you know you guys are not congratulating me or telling me good job mm -hmm. and so a lot of time he kind of felt like he was on the back burner not being seen or on his own island yeah uh -huh. on my his own uh -huh. island so we both on islands <laughs> yeah. All of that. so what that, what happens there is like a spirit of abandonment yeah trauma is an open door mm -hmm. and depending on how you react to the trauma will depend on what spirit will come in yeah. because the word of the Lord tells us that the enemy is lurking. Yeah. He's lurking. And so he doesn't cause the traumatic event. But as soon as he notices that one's going on, he's like, okay, let me see. Mm -hmm. Are they going to fall? Mm -hmm. Are they going to cry? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to get in here some kind of way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to take root and I'm going to get a home. Because 
Re, uh, Coach Renee was talking about, you know, her children. She still had children mm -hmm. and how, you know, it, it's a family event. Mm -hmm. When something mm -hmm. traumatic happens, it yes. becomes a it family event, yes. family. Mm -hmm. you yes. know. Mm -hmm. And even though you may have the, the middle child, uh, uh, the uh, Keelan, who's in the corner and not saying anything, mm -hmm. just because your child is not saying anything, mm -hmm does not mean it's not affecting them. That's so yeah. true. Just because they're not saying anything mm -hmm. does not mean that there is not an enemy lurking around trying to get in their mind. Yeah. Trying to, uh, to put thoughts in their mind. That's so you true. know, that if this is going to happen to you or it's not going to happen to you and nobody really cares because mm -hmm. everybody's focusing on there. So mm -hmm. when traumatic events happen, it affects the whole family. And sometimes the, that's why we our model is we help families and individuals break cycles. Yeah. But we have to start with one individual at a time yeah. because we need that matriarch of the family we need that strong yes. voice of the family yes. <laughs> that we can get to with them and then when in our absence they can support they'll have the tools and the resources necessary to support the rest of the family but you've got to identify the strong man yes. and so when you get that call that your son has been um uh, arrested again, you said, hey, I was angry. So if we don't deal with that, then that mm -hmm. becomes a spirit of mm -hmm. anger. Yeah. And he comes in and take root. And you don't even know he's there because you're so focused. Or right. with you, a spirit of abandonment. I'm on this island all by myself. Right. Nobody's mm -hmm. here. Nobody cares about me. You know, I've got us. I've got grandparents. I've got all, but nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And so he's lurking around because Looking if abandonment can get in there, then he'll get comfortable and and years later, he'll bring rejection or he may depression. bring deception, depression. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so for you, which would be your, your co most constant companion, uh, whether it was denial, anger, bargaining, acceptance, did you ever try to bargain with God? Uh, or even you, coach, did you ever try to bargain with God? Like, if you do this, I will do that. No, I don't think it was bargaining, but I do see extreme anxiety. And I know I had extreme anxiety attacks, like to the point where I can't think, I can't focus, I can't breathe, mm. and I am on the floor crying. And it's almost crippling to the point where you could not, it just felt like I couldn't get out of it. And I, I would feel it in the beginning of the day when I knew I was going to have an anxiety attack that day. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to stay busy and like focus on other things. And it just never... Uh, work for me because I wasn't dealing with the issue. Now, one of the things I want to bring up is I started going to counseling in Atlanta. Um, the counselor that I started seeing wanted to try hypnosis. Mm. She wanted to try a whole bunch of other mm. things. And I realized at every appointment, I never felt any better. Mm. But I kept going faithfully, like at some point, this is going to get good. And my husband was the one to go, this is not a good counselor. And she, when I told her about it, she was like, just doesn't want you to get help. Mm. <laughs> he just doesn't want you to get help. That's what it is. It's not. It's not. It's not that I am doing something wrong or I'm not giving you the information you need. It's. It's your husband. Now I'm not speaking against counseling because there are good therapists out yeah. there, oh, yeah. and sometimes yeah. you do need to go to therapy. Mm -hmm. But the one that I was going to was not a good therapist. That I definitely know that. <laughs> now for me, I never tried to bargain with God mm -hmm. because I knew that it was not about me, it was about my son mm -hmm. and what God was doing in his life. Yeah. Okay. So no, I never tried bargaining with God. Okay, mm -hmm. so we got the depression mm -hmm. and that you could either I know you moved toward acceptance mm -hmm. and you had to and you moved because you God made it clear that it was not about you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I know this that there is always purpose in our pain. Yeah. There was always purpose. Mm -hmm. Your purpose was to start a support group for women who were hiding because it can be kind of embarrassing well, it can. It that can. you don't want mm -hmm. nobody to know that your Absolutely. child is in jail. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And so when you reach out to this woman and say, hey, yeah, you know, my child is in jail. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. You might understand what I'm going through. Absolutely. And so there was purpose in your pain. And I still feel like, and I don't want to go into this right now, but I just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, that you still haven't even touched the, the, the base of what is coming up out of this. And there is still just so much more. And, and I know that you're very busy, but God is going to eliminate some of that mm. stuff uh, because mm. what will happen is that even that, when you can busy yourself to the point that even that can become an open door because you begin yeah. to rely on that. Yeah. And God is going to move some of that stuff out of the way so that you can uh, experience the full purpose of your mm. pain. Oh yeah. my Okay. Oh my. I, I, I'm yeah. trying to keep. I'm trying to keep my tongue from rolling. <laughs> I believe but, that. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> I believe that. Ooh. 
I gave me a term for that earlier today, and I posted it on Facebook, recycled resource. Mm. So basically what that is, is I'm a resource, and what I'm going through, my experiences, my situations, are going to be edifying for somebody else who's going through it. So I'm recycling what I learned, so you don't have to go through the same I thing. I think I've seen that post, and I yes, shared it on the ministry Yes, page. you did. Yes, uh -huh. you did. <laughs> recycled resources. Uh -huh. Yes, so yes. here you've got denial, anger, mm -hmm. bargaining, acceptance, depression, and you said yours was, was mostly depression. Yep, depression and anxiety. Okay, so how did you come out of that? I hit rock bottom. Okay. I, I, I hit a point where I think God was just like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. You keep playing with me. You know my word. Right. You know what you, you've grown up in the church. You know how to prophesy. You know how to speak in tongues. And you have allowed Satan to pull you so far away out of my presence that you won't even come to me and pray. Mm -hmm. When I realized mm -hmm. I hit the bottom, my husband, we had a prayer that we say with our kids every morning. And we actually got this. I got this idea from Tiffany mm -hmm. because I was in the car with her one morning when her kids were really young and she was saying, a prayer with them and I'm okay. like I need to start doing this mm -hmm. so I did start doing it mm -hmm. but it in over time just falling out of God's will and operating in flesh and doing my own thing one morning he called and he said um, this is why we were separated he said let's say the prayer this morning together while we while you're taking Christian to school and so I remember just being so angry like mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out why I'm angry but I'm angry at him because you want to say this prayer and so I'm <laughs> like no I'm not saying it and it didn't dawn on me at that moment I couldn't say God I couldn't say Jesus mm -hmm. I couldn't say in the name of Jesus wow. I couldn't say any of that mm -hmm. like I was just frustrated and so when Christian got out the car I yelled at him and I'm like this is your fault blah 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 and I went off on him but it didn't dawn on me that there's something wrong with me mm -hmm. I'm thinking there's something wrong with him and sometimes when you're in trauma you're so blinded that you don't realize mm -hmm. that I'm in this Absolutely. mess I'm, I'm Absolutely. in this trauma so I was so frustrated and then finally I think I reached a point where God said I'm done Okay, you know what? I'm done with you. You keep doing what you want to do. Figure it out. And I felt when God moved his hand off of oh me. My. And he said, you know what? Go ahead. Say mm -hmm. you can have her. Mm -hmm. I felt it. I was driving home and I heard drive this car off a bridge right oh, now. Jesus. And all I could think about was I'm not going to see my kids grow up. I'm not going to see them graduate from college. I'm not going to see them get married. And I begin to cry because I knew without a doubt in my mind, this was it. There was no way I could stop this car. There was no way I could stop what was happening. I knew this was it. Mm. For some reason, I called my uh, husband at the time and we were separated. So and we're talking about a divorce, getting ready to see a divorce lawyer. I just called him and I didn't even say anything. And so he stayed on the phone the entire night. He had just worked a 18 hour mm. shift and had to go back in a few hours. But he said, I knew in that moment when I answered the phone, I heard if you hang up on her, you will never hear from her again. Mm. This will be it. Ooh. And so he said, I didn't hang up. He said, as exhausted as I was, I woke up immediately and just start talking to you. Mm -hmm. Just start talking. And so the next morning we got up and he said, pray with me. Mm. And so we just start praying and just start, I just start seeing God change the situation. Praise but it God. took that moment for God to say, you know what? I'm done. And I think we all get to a moment mm -hmm. where you have to make a decision. Either I'm going to stand for Christ and I'm going to follow God or I'm going to operate in flesh and I'm going to be on this side. Mm -hmm. And when you make that decision, you have to deal with the consequences Absolutely. of those decisions. Mm -hmm. I did not understand at that <clears throat> moment the consequences will fall on my kids. My wow. son was in third grade and a teacher called me that next week and said, we need you to come up here immediately. Mm. Third grader talking about suicide. Jeez. Mom, the week before that, was thinking about killing herself. Mm -hmm. And so you don't even realize mm -hmm. that that spirit is mm -hmm. operating down the bloodline. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. going into the children. See, yes. we think our children are safe and they don't mm -hmm. know what I'm dealing with. They don't know what I'm going through. They're protected. We don't realize that the same devils and demons right. that are knocking you down will knock your babies yes. down. They will go after your children. They will go after your children. Yes. And so you end up having a child who's suddenly suicidal who doesn't really understand life but starts talking about if I was not here my mm -hmm. family would be better off and this is the child who had the seizures 
I don't want to have a seizure in mm. school, so I won't go to sleep. I don't want to have a seizure in school, so when I feel norm weird, as he put it, I feel weird, mm. I run and go hide somewhere. So the school has to call me because they can't find Christian. Mm. So these are things that he's dealing with. And then add to that, we still have the middle schooler who doesn't quite know his place. Yeah. When you, when you open doors, when you don't deal with trauma effectively and respond the right way, mm -hmm. it becomes a doorway where the enemy can come in. Yeah. And listen, the enemy is consistent in who he is, just like God is consistent in who he is. He is a thief and a robber who came to kill, steal, and destroy. And so as parents, when we don't respond the right way, we get so uh, we begin to drown in our own depression, and we just forget about our kids. We just go through the motions of being a mother, and the enemy is like, yep, we got them now. We got them now because there's no intercessor here. There's yeah. nobody to stop us. <laughs> we got free reign in yeah. this house. Mm -hmm. And just because Sally don't start acting out that day does not mean that the enemy is not trying to set her up for destruction. Mm -hmm. He will bring, Sally can be uh, eight years old, and he will start bringing in different spirits into Sally that's going to rob her of her identity, that's going to make her feel rejected and abandoned, mm -hmm. that's going to make her start experiencing perversion, yeah. that's going to make her angry at her mom, angry at her father, mm -hmm. angry at her siblings, mm -hmm. and you might not see the full manifestation mm -hmm. of those spirits until Sally turns 16 mm -hmm. yeah but they start moving in at mm -hmm. eight yeah okay yeah. Yeah. and so that's why it is so important for us to be able to identify mm -hmm. our feelings and work through that yeah. and you've got to make sure that you are surrounded by people who can help you work through yes. those emotions and those yes. feelings you know and as we talk to to the coach we say that was tough love you've got to have friends who love you enough to be tough with you mm -hmm. who say get up out of that bed mm -hmm. right what, what was Get that out. you said? Mm -hmm. You know that's not right. Right. You right. know? Right. Hold you accountable. Hold you yeah. accountable. Like that. That's the word. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk about, when, how did you come out of that? Was that with the prayer? That was with the prayer. And then actually I came here to visit my husband because he moved to Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. We still lived in Atlanta. This was the dream had literally just opened a few weeks before that. We came in to visit. And was, while it Christmas? Was, was it Christmas? Uh -uh. It, I went, had to be. it had to be because yeah. Christian, I was like, didn't even know they were in town. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta, I, I can't even go to the store. I gotta get a gift for Christian. And so, you I remember that? that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, what I took it? one of the gifts. I don't know if it was a, a puzzle or something. And he was like, I don't want that. I was like, what? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I remember we funny. came to visit Dream, <laughs> that was funny. and while sitting in the sanctuary, while you were ministering, I heard God clearly say, you're going to be a part of this ministry. Mm. Now, anybody who asked me before that, will you move back to Cincinnati? Are you getting back with your husband? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm staying in Atlanta. I'm not leaving Atlanta ever, ever. And so as I'm sitting there and I hear God say this, I just begin to cry. Mm. Not because I'm like humbled by it, but I'm like, God, I don't want to be in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> I love Atlanta. Why don't you? No, God. And I just begin to cry because I'm like, God, it was not your calling for me and Kenny to be together in the beginning. Because again, I ain't learned my lesson. I'm still telling God what I want him to do. And so I'm like, no, this cannot be it. And so as I'm driving out of Atlanta, it just, I mean, out of Cincinnati, it became so hard to cross the bridge mm -hmm. just to go into Kentucky. And for those who've never been to Cincinnati, we're literally right here at the bridge it's literally 30 <laughs> minutes away maybe 45 and I couldn't drive across that bridge and I just start crying and at that moment I knew God was moving so I said okay God whatever you want I'm going to do but that is the thing about being a mom and understanding when God is moving you've got to be able to hear his voice because yes. like you were talking about recognizing those demons who are at work in little Sally well if I don't understand demons I don't understand demonic forces I don't understand Absolutely. spirit I'm gonna blame little Sally mm -hmm. why Absolutely. are you acting up I'm a whoop Sally I'm a jump on Sally we gonna talk about Sally mm -hmm. Sally come in the room everybody's calling Sally the name of the demon but we're not saying there's something operating in Sally so mm -hmm. when Sally hears that 
that she hears everybody's against me. Mm. Yes. Everybody's against me. And she Every identifies with the name. Yes, she identifies yeah. with the name. So we've got to be very careful. And I said this yesterday, what we speak and say into our children, what we yes. call them, yes. because they will become whatever you That's say. Right. And Absolutely. if you keep saying, you know, you just going to be a little thug or, you mm. know, he a little this or he, I remember I, when my kids were little, I was with grandma and they were running around and I was like, they so bad. And grandma hit me and was like, don't call them kids bad. They are not bad. She said, you will not call them that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand as a young mom what she was trying to teach mm -hmm. me. I'm thinking, she just, she, did she just hit me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm grown. Wait a minute. <laughs> But she'll pop you in a minute and tell you that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to call them what they shall yes, be, not it. what they are acting like right now. And so I had to learn that lesson. So now what, as they're getting older, we're still calling them what you shall be. You're going to be Amen. a prosperous young man. You're going to walk in faith. Amen. You're going to be a man of God. You're going to be a man of standard and honor, even in teaching them how to date. Because I have sons who are going to be looking for a wife mm -hmm. when they get older. Older. Not right now <laughs> when they get older, but I have to instill in them how to treat somebody's daughter who's potentially going to That's be their good. wife. Mm -hmm. And they have to see the example. So their father has to show them, this is how you treat your mm -hmm. wife. This yes. is how you talk yes. to her. Yes. And they have to see that example of how a woman should That's treat good. her husband. That's good. So, yeah. So, you know what? Um, I want to say something and we're going to bring on our, our next speaker. But um, if you you're listening to her talk about the beginning and of course we don't have time for her to share everything about our marriage but if you could see them now you would never think that they had the struggles mm -hmm. that's one point i want to make the other one is she is a prolific prophet i mean just accurate accurate teacher those gifts were in her didn't even know it when mm. she was wilding out <laughs> when she was rebelling you know she was in i, I was the uh administrator or facilitator for uh, the high school choir here in Cincinnati when she was a kid living here, and I put her out. She did. My she mom did. hit the roof. She was like, you put her out? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, I did. She was like, you cannot do that. And like, you know, I'm like, I'm wrong. <laughs> Wait a minute. When, when will school system expect me to do the right thing? Yes. And I said, when she act, if she start acting like the other kids, mm -hmm. I have to put her out like I would do the other kids, Second even standard. though there were still gifts in her. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and I'm making a point, when you have faced a traumatic experience mm -hmm. because you're still gifted, yeah. you won't deal with it mm -hmm. because you can still preach, yeah, because you can still can. prophesy, yep. because you can still sing, because you can still usher, because you're a bishop, you're an yep. evangelist, you're a pastor, you don't deal with it. And the longer mm. you stop, the longer you uh, delay dealing with it, mm, the yeah. more company will come in. Oh my. Yeah, just the more company joining. will come oh in, okay? My. Because you refuse to deal with it, you did not respond to the trauma yeah. correctly. Yeah. Okay? The oh. more demonic spirits. Because, mm -hmm. wait a minute, I can still preach my butt off. When mm -hmm. I preach, they throw money. Mm -hmm. They throw money mm -hmm. on the altar when I preach, you know, right. when I go to a store, they'd be like, oh, hi, Bishop. Hi, Apostle. Mm -hmm. Hi, this. No. You are still mm -hmm. jacked up. Your mm -hmm. gifts, you think that your gifts are covering yes. up the fact yes. that you are jacked up yes. and you need help because mm -hmm. God says I'm coming Ooh. back for a church mm -hmm. without a spot, without mm -hmm. a wrinkle, mm -hmm. without a blemish, yes. and there is help. Mm -hmm. But yes. pride and yes. a spirit of religion will keep you from getting the help that yes, you need. There is help. And so we can't Ooh, do that. Boy. And so I'm just, you know, I'm trying to keep cool here. Mm. And so listen, <laughs> Tiffany is going to swap places with him. Oh, okay. When your child is missing, whether oh your child has been abducted or your child has run away. Oh we want to talk about that for a few minutes. How, what do you go through? Um, what do you go through? I'm going to try to be real quiet on this one because I was having my own trauma around that time. <laughs> you know, what do you go through? And does the trauma last? Mm. Yeah. Does it last? How does it affect the children? How does it affect your, your relationship with your, your, your spouse? Mm -hmm. Tell us, Tiffany, about keeping my sanctity mm. while my child is missing. Keep in my sanctity. Lord have mercy. So yeah. the first time Michaela uh, ran away and I was hoping she would be on, but of course she's not. Um, we had just moved and not to 
drown out giving you the backstory because it's a lot of backstory as we mm. all have right there there was a foundation that was right. laid to get us to this point but uh we got a call from her school we had uh moved from one area westchester to fairfield got a call that hey michaela's not here what what do you mean she's not here oh well she left well why did you let her leave um and and to find out that she had caught an uber and she was 14 15 she 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 was too young to be catching an uber because she, she looked like she was 12 she mm. she caught an uber and took the uber the uber driver drove her four hours away because she wanted to go see her boyfriend mm. Mm. yes and mm. my uh, my husband is a truck driver and so he was able to call his dispatcher and say where's this at where you know so we could find her so um, her her father and um, who else with your dad? With, her father and her grandfather went all the way four hours to pick her up. Mm. That was the first time I couldn't sleep. I was um, that's when I started taking sleeping pills, mm. and I was taking probably four because for for the regular person, one sleeping pill would put them out for the night. Mm. I was taking two and wake up in the middle of the night okay what's going on mm. the second time she ran away she went out of our um basement window and <laughs> the kids called and said Michaela's not here where where, where did she go and I think yeah. I had just ran up to the store or something Michaela what, what are you doing and so I'm like okay lord so of course um, you know, having an apostle as a mother, you begin to look at, really look at, okay, what doors have I opened? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at this point, I had just started going through um, the deliverance training. Um, so if you have not taken the deliverance training, I highly <laughs> recommend it. Um, because even being up under someone that, and, and, and being able to glean from someone with such oil, there was still stuff that I was dealing with. So everyone needs deliverance. So I recommend you definitely go through that deliverance. So I had just, um, I, was getting, I had started it and then I had stopped. So that was the uh, second time. So the third time, which um, just kind of, I think took me over the deep end was 2016. Um, let me let me 2016 we had went to macon georgia to fellowship with dr diana hollins and this was in february february yep we and um it was a wonderful event <laughs> it was it was a wonderful event and that was the first time my husband and i had ever went anywhere and was um, minister to together let me say this I had been married at that time what eight years and I had never seen my husband fall out I had never seen um, him truly just surrender to to the will uh, to the will and the word of God mm. and so um, we get a call we're gonna come back that Sunday we get a call Saturday from Michaela's father we can't find Michaela what do you mean you can't find her mm. She had, um, her father had went across the street and Michaela had climbed out the window and apparently um, some guys had picked her up. So I'm like, okay, we're on our way home. Driving back from Macon, Georgia to Cincinnati was the longest drive mm -hmm. ever. And not only was it a long drive, we got caught in a blizzard mm -hmm. where we had to pull over. So uh, Dr. Diana Hollis, we, every, everybody was praying. Um, the Word of Deliverance was praying. Dream was praying. Uh, Macon was praying. We had, we had Prayers were sent up. And, and, and the Word of the Lord came. She's okay. But <laughs> even... Even being able to hear the word of the Lord, even being able to quote scriptures, my mind, my mind wasn't right. My mind was mm -hmm. all over the place, yeah. Um, yeah. which allowed, I'm like, we just had this great time and this is happening. And then uh, mm -hmm. my husband and I began to kind of go back and forth. And it was like, yeah, I don't, I don't need this. I don't need this right now. Um, so 24 hours had passed. We had found her. I started putting stuff up on social media. I got in touch with uh, the news, like, okay. And you try not to think the worst, mm -hmm. but you think the worst. Like, yeah. you literally begin to prepare yes. yourself, uh -huh. like, okay. 
Um, and, and I'm still, and so my husband is like, Tiffany, you're going to have to trust God. And I'm like, no, that's not how this thing, this, that's not how it works. And don't tell me what I need to do because, you know, we, we still had two kids that were not in the house. And I'm like, I'm worried about them. I'm worried. I, I still have children in the house and I'm like, I can't focus on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I keep just crying, eyes swell. And, um, somebody says, we think we found her and we're like, mm. you did. And so this was days later. This was this was days later, and she finally came home. She was um, she was attacked. Oh. She was physically attacked, oh. and the disappointment I felt, the disappointment I felt, the guilt that I felt, like yeah. you know, maybe if I had never divorced her father, maybe we wouldn't have been going through this, or even through divorce, maybe if I hadn't married my husband, we wouldn't have been going through this. Oh, well, maybe if I hadn't had another child, maybe she was just the only child. Like the guilt mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. overwhelming. I was, dr I, I drowned in it. Oh, I drowned in it. So I, I wasn't, so not only was I taking, starting to take sleeping pills, but I began to drink as well. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, still speaking in somebody's tongues, still uh, <laughs> probably somebody. doing some type yeah, of ministry, <laughs> still sweating my wig out, and um, just not dealing with it, but dealing with me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, she came home, and it's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna get, we're gonna get through this. But I didn't know how. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know how. I didn't know. I felt like okay, maybe I need to keep a tighter leash on her. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just need to draw her in, and that wasn't it. So she began cutting, and I'm like, what in the world? Mm -hmm. Like, people fornicate all the time. Like, people commit adultery all the time. Why is this happening to her? Mm -hmm. Like, she was birthed in in love. Like, I was married. Like, why, why is this happening? Like, yeah, she's got to pray a mother and, she got to pray a mother and grandmother. Like, seriously, like, mm. if you don't honor my prayers, God, surely you gonna honor theirs. <laughs> you know? Well, honestly, that's what I'm yeah, thinking. Like, yeah. look, and, yeah. that's, and that's not weird. Um, not. I was talking to a, a, one of my other grandchildren uh, about Dana, and he said, when he heard that she was sick, he began to cry out to God. And he said, Lord, I know I have been unrighteous before you, mm. but there are some righteous people All praying right. for my Ooh. auntie. Mm. He said, so here they are. All right. You yeah. know, All right. you yes. got it. And, I, and, and that thing blessed me. And I was like, I know God heard that prayer. You know why? <laughs> because he humbled himself yes. and he was, yes. and he yes. was honest. Yeah. I know I'm not right. All right. right. But will you hear the prayer of yes. somebody else? Yes. The prayers of yes. the righteous. Because the Bible says the prayers of That's the righteous it. avail. That's yes. it. And it was like, there are some righteous oh people yes. that are praying. Yes. Let their prayers avail. Yes. And so um, we ended up having, she ended up having to go because she started cutting. She had to go into the psych ward. And that was another like, okay, oh, this is just... Because that's just, not your dream for your child. Of course, it's not. None of that's your it's dream not, for your child. So we're thinking, okay, let's let's do a let's do a uh, three hundred and sixty. Um, went in the psych ward and it was like, okay, the prayers of the righteous avail. Michaela, so for those of you that are familiar with um, the the school system in Cincinnati, there's a school system, Fairfield City Schools, and they have um, a building specifically for children mm. or kids who are not functioning well in traditional high school. Mm -hmm. So we enrolled Michaela in that. And once she got out of um, Children's Hospital, she just buckled down. The thing with Michaela is when she's focused on something, she's focused. <laughs> and she's able to pull through. <laughs> and because of the prayers of the righteous availing, she graduated a year early. Praise mm -hmm. God. She graduated a year early. There's still some hiccups that happen after the fact, but I begin to learn how to celebrate the small victories. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's yes. what I, I what, it's what, while I was still dealing with me and mm. closing doors. And when I mean closing doors and when someone wanted to try to reopen them, keeping those doors closed. shut, yeah. keeping yeah. them closed. Yeah. And so when you all heard Kai talking earlier about how the enemy skip does it after the enemy realizes that he can't get through you, he goes to the kids. Mm. Yeah. So now the prayers have availed over Michaela. Yeah. So now, oh, okay. So Michaela's focused. So now it hits 
my second child. Mm-hmm. And it hits my second child through parent through through parenting through through her um positivity of her body, you mm-hmm. know, the way I look, the way I act. And it's just like, wait a minute. Hold on, we just dealt with that. Mm. So this time around, though, not only do I have more knowledge and wisdom, I know how to use the weapons that God has given to me. And I know how to use them for myself and not rely on... um, Well, no, I take that back because I do rely on the prayers of my mom and my grandmama because (laughs) they done got me through some things. Amen. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Grace, you'll be your grandmama too, won't you? You gonna be your grandmama too? I got the hair for it, yeah. But but the biggest piece during that time um, was the pills and and the and the drinking. And I used to my my husband um, used to joke with me, but not anymore. But um, I'll never forget. My sister was like you drink way too much. And if you know anything about my family history. Open it, doors. It, it's open a door. It runs in the bloodline, and so I have to make the decision. It Cut stops. Off. It stops mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. It stops here. Mm-hmm. But one of the things God showed me as I was going through it, and just um, as I was going through that season of my life, is um, not the open doors. I was dealing with anger, yeah. of rejection, mm-hmm. rejection from a child that yeah. we didn't deal with until. 2016 was it 2006 rejection as a child um abandonment uh guilt shame shame because there's there's a lot of shame um when you do things outside of god's timing and so then it begins to this is because of my disobedience this is this is because of me but one thing that if i don't leave you with anything at all know that god can take any bad situation and turn yes. it around yes. for your good yes. Yes. Any situation. but you have got to one seek first the kingdom of god Absolutely. and his righteousness yes. and it has to be truly submit to his will it came a time where it was like we prayed the lord's prayer right your will be done mm-hmm. in earth as it is in heaven. But what happens when his will is not your will? Mm-hmm. And then you yeah, want to pump down really, brakes. Like, wait really. a minute, Lord. Yeah. Hold on. That's <laughs> not. That's my yes. Hold on. Because, because we, 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 we pray all of these good prayers. And, mm-hmm. you know, God is going to bless you. You're going to get mm-hmm. this. You're going to get that. Yeah, yeah, and But yeah. we don't deal with the consequences of sin. Yeah, okay. We don't deal yeah. with right, the right. wages of that's sin it. is. Yeah, death. It may it, not be know? a physical death, uh-huh. but I dealt with an emotional death mm-hmm. that I had to be resuscitated. Yeah. And that's why yeah. it's so important for you to have people around you. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got to have people around you yes. who are righteous. Yes. Yes. And you got to have people around you that remind you, yes. as Kim reminds her, of who you are. Yes. Yes. Right. Who you Please. are, what God Absolutely. has called you to be. Now, Praise the Lord. Because you're supposed to ask me questions. I ain't coming to But you <laughs> answered you you answer the questions, though. You answered them. I mean, I'm going to wrap it up, but you, you answer the questions. Okay. 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 So, praise the Lord. Praise Father, the Lord. Praise now, um, I can't stress enough the importance of having people around you. And so, for my portion, I'll probably do a live, a short live tomorrow to try to wrap all of this up. But again, I want to leave this, uh, I want to end this with scripture because we talked about prayer, prayer being her habitation, you know, and working, even though God's going to take some of those jobs away from her, uh, Coach Renee, Kim saying, you know what, I knew God took his hand off me because I didn't respond the right way. She didn't know. Sometimes you just don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, as Renee said, when I said confidence, she said, explain that. What do you mean by company? Mm-hmm. And so we have to remember that everybody don't know the language mm-hmm. that we're speaking. Mm-hmm. That's why I can't say that's my African-American sister and mm-hmm. think that she understands how I feel mm-hmm. and making the mistake that Moses did. Well, right. now we, we, are, we are Israelites, so we're mm-hmm. on the same page. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure that there are people that are on the same page with you. Mm-hmm. And so for our last scripture, I want to look at David for a minute. I know we got to go, but I want to look at David in 1 Samuel 10. We're going to talk about coping and uh, other ways to cope with trauma. Well, let me just read this. Traumatic experiences often arouse strong, disturbing feelings that may or may not abate on their own. 
that you might not be able to get rid of this on your own. You need somebody Amen. to hold you accountable. Amen. You need somebody that's going to yes. pray for you. Yes. When my daughter Dana said, Mom, I'm tired, I said, then rest and we will fight. Yes. Right. You just rest. Yes. You know, you never tell somebody when they say, I'm tired, you never be like, well, keep fighting, keep mm -hmm. fighting. No, mm -hmm. rest. Mm -hmm. yes. right. Because even in the natural, yes. when you are fighting in a yes. natural war, yes. you get so injured, what do yes. they do? They, they come, come and take yes. you off the you field. Get, yes. If you can't walk off the field, yes. they come and carry you off the yes. field yes. and the battle keep yes. going on. Yes. So you got to surround yourself yes. with people who will keep fighting when you can't. When yes. you can't walk, yes. when you can't yes. talk, when you're bleeding, yes. when yes. you're emotionally and spiritually bleeding, yes. people yes. say, I'm going to take you off the field. Yes. But I'm, I'm going to take you fighting. to a place but where I'm you can get here, but I'm going to keep fighting. I got you. We got this battle. We got this battle. Get you an errand. Woo, my yeah, God. Get, get I'm, your I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Listen, I want to thank you guys. For, for hanging in here. Give us about five more minutes. And so anyway, you know, David had just been away and he gets back to Ziklag and he sees that the Amalekites have come in. Yeah. They have come in. And so listen, it says they overthrew it. They burnt it with fire. Mm -hmm. They took the women captive. Yes. And then it says they carried them off to be slaves. Come on. What happens when you suffer one loss mm -hmm. at a time, which mm -hmm. all of these women have talked about tonight? Mm -hmm. They didn't have just one thing that they had to deal with. Mm -hmm. They had multiple yes. things just like you. Mm -hmm. yes. Just like you. Yes. Don't you know that that is called like a battering ram? It's like the, the enemy comes and he just hit, 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 mm -hmm. hit, 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 hit. It's almost like rope a dope. Remember? Mm -hmm. I think it was Muhammad Ali that when people started hearing the term rope a dope, don't get in the corner. Right. Don't get in the corner. <laughs> rope a dope. Keep moving. Yeah. If you got to turn and turn yeah. and turn, keep moving. Don't get in the corner. Yeah. And so here David was in a corner and it says, listen, not only was he dealing with the fact that he had lost his wives. Okay, mm -hmm. it, and lost everything, mm -hmm. and it says the men wanted to stone him. Uh -huh. They sure did. Uh -huh. It said they had all cried mm -hmm. until they couldn't cry mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Is that your testimony? Have you ever experienced oh that? My. Have you ever mm -hmm. cried to the point where you Ooh. couldn't cry no oh more? Like I can't cry no more. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna lay here. My head hurts. Mm -hmm. I can't yes. think no more. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna yes. lay here. My and it God. says they cried till they couldn't cry no more. Just and so if, if you can yeah, imagine yeah, being yeah. in that type of depressive state, mm -hmm. and then your friends who you've been fighting with who you've been hanging with look yeah. they want to turn on you they and sure so do. listen yeah. these were the friends that were thieves that were robbers <laughs> that were murderers that he met in his wilderness right mm, right but let me tell you god even used them yeah but here they are with david we're gonna kill you david and David was like, uh-uh, because he knew how to worship. So you might not always be able to change the people around you, but yeah. you can change you. That's yes. right. You might not be able to cause people around you to worship, but you go That's into worship. Right. That's and it said right. David began to feel yes. encouraged because yes. he had a relationship Ooh, with yes. God. Yes. Yes. So yes. you want to cope with trauma? You better have Amen. a relationship Amen. with God. Amen. Do you hear me? You yes. better have a yes. relationship with God yes. in order to cope with this yes. trauma. Yes. And he says, listen, bring me the epoch. Right. Yeah. Bring it to me. Because yeah. I got to ask God a question. When you feel overwhelmed, you better learn how to yeah. talk to God. Right. When they said, I stay in that place yeah. where I can commune yeah. with him, where I can get instructions from him. I yeah. stay in yeah. that place. Y'all, yeah. yeah. this yeah. is supposed to be calm, Ooh. right? I stay in that place. I stay in that place. I stay in that place. And so David stayed in that place. And he went and he heard from God. He said, I got one question. Should I pursue? He said, not only pursue, but you're going to recover all. You're going to recover all. And so I'm going to leave you all with this tonight. You're going to recover all. It may be dark. It may be yes, storming. Yes, you may yes, be like yes, a devil. Yes. You don't understand. Yes, I buried my yes. son. I buried my yes, mama. You don't yes. understand. I lost Ooh, my job. You're going to recover it all. Lord yeah, 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 You're going to recover yeah, all. Yeah, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Yes. Listen, it may not look like it did. Thank the Lord. But God is going to give Thank you a new. Yes. He's going to give you a new. But you're, 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 you can't get your mama back. Mm-mm. You mm -hmm. can't get your child back. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we know something about reading the story of Come Job. On. Come on, man. That even mm -hmm. if all ten of your children Come die, right. God right. knows right. how to yes. give you new. Yes. Right. He knows how to give you another vision. Right. He knows how to increase yes. your hope. Yes. Yes. So knows. coping with trauma mm -hmm. mean that you've got to mm -hmm. identify, mm -hmm. recognize that it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. And say, this hurt. 
Because sometimes we want to run away from the pain. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't run away from it. You got to yeah, embrace you know. it. And if you don't know how to embrace it and say, God, not only do I need you to teach me how to embrace it, teach me how to navigate through this thing. Mm -hmm. Teach yes. me how to navigate through this yes. thing. And then put people around me who can yes. hold that's me true. up when I feel like yes. I can't go anymore. Yes, put people around me yes. who can hold me up, Lord. Yes, who can carry God. me, God. Yes. Who can speak Lord. truth to me, yes. God. Yes. Who can hear from you. Yes. Yes. Hear from you Ooh. need to be can surrounded by people who can hear from God. Yes. yes. Listen. And, and one thing Apostle said, and I want you to remember this, in Job, Job's, even all that Job went through, he mm. said, but I ain't going to charge God foolish. Mm -hmm. yeah. I ain't going to charge God for doing wrong mm -hmm. because if God does it, then it's just mm -hmm. and he's faithful yes. and he's righteous. Yes. Don't charge God foolishly. Yeah. Don't do mm -hmm. it. Don't do it. Trauma in the mind, pulling down strongholds, if you can't do it, you got to get people around you yes. that's going to pull it down yeah, for it you. Pull down strongholds, those things, those thoughts and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge yeah. of yeah. Christ. You're going to have to pull them down. Yes. It may be one by one, but you're going to have to pull them down. Come Absolutely. on, my brother and my sister. Absolutely. Oh, amen. God is just faithful. I'm, I'm wrapping up for real. I know I'm going to try to pick up tomorrow, but I, I want to tell you this, and this is what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. No matter how many losses you have sustained, mm. last Monday uh, morning, I dreamt that my daughter had a heart attack, and I dismissed it. I, I was like, that ain't you, God. Mm -hmm. I know. Everything she's been through, I know you're not going to let her have a heart attack. Mm. That's the devil. He coming after my peace. Mm. That's the devil. He coming after my peace. Mm. No, no, That's no. Right. And so I had a doctor's appointment and she called me and she said, Mama, I can't take it no more. I can't take the pain no more. Mama, I'm sorry. There's no more fight in me. And I said, I'll be there as soon as I leave the doctor's appointment, Dana. And I got there and I looked at my daughter and I said, I got to call 911. Because mm -hmm. she was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. And she said, let me, help me use the bathroom first. And so I got into the bathroom and her head went back. And I'm thinking, oh, no. I still didn't think about a heart attack because I dismissed that, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, she might be having a seizure. And so mm -hmm. I called 911 and said, she's having a seizure. Don't you know mm -hmm. that she did not mm -hmm. have a seizure? She but so once she got in the ambulance... Mm -hmm. My she God. started having that heart attack. Mm -hmm. It was like God was saying, look, there is a, a severe blockage in her heart. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to okay. keep her from having this heart attack at home because if she have it at home, mm -hmm. she will not make it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold it. So, mm -hmm. Deborah, you got to get over there. You got to get over there. See, we want God to just go ahead and fix it. But he has a way. Yes. Yes. He has a way of yes. working things out. Thank it's not Lord. always how thank we want it. It's not the pretty picture Ooh, that we want it. But yes. God yes. is consistently who he is. Yes, he is. He's God. consistently thank who he you. is. Thank you. And he always knows what he's doing. So listen, I'm going to try to come on a little a look in the morning, sometime tomorrow to finish this. But I want to thank uh, Coach Renee. I want to thank, thank Tiffany and Kai thank for you. being with us thank tonight. You. And listen, I want to thank you yes. all for it's being with us us tonight. I thank the Holy Spirit for being with us tonight. Yes. Just love you yes. all so much. Yes. Continue to be with us and watch us and uh, pray for us. We need your support. Yes. We need you to pray for us. And if you have any questions, you need any help, just go ahead and contact us through email uh, or reach out through us through Messenger. Listen, we've learned how to weather some storms yes. and we can help you Praise with yours. God. May God bless each and every last one of you. I don't even know what camera to look at right now, <laughs> but God bless each and every last one of you. Thank you so very much. <laughs>